Leading off for the Falcons, right fielder, Ryan Hill. Scoring 8-7 to seven after falling behind early in the ball game. 7-1, to one, they were able to rally and reel off seven consecutive runs. On the mound for the ball game is, for the Rattlers, is Matt McClain. And his pitch is lofted over to short there to make the play is Al Gonzalez for the first out of Second baseman, David Lee. Matt McClain has a 5-2 win-loss record with a 2.87 ERA and has 60 strikeouts so far this season. Bunt is shown by David Lee. And he takes that pitch for ball one. Tune on that account. Duo from McLean is just low, ball three. Let's meet the defensive line of four of the St. Mary's Rattlers. Over our left field is Scott Jones. At center is Adrian Garcia. Brooks Borden is at right. Drake Roberts covering third. Al Gonzalez over at short. Mario Maldonado is at second, and Joe Hermsen is at first. And catching for Matt McLean is Keith Funk. That pitch is swung on and missed. Good for strikeout number one of the game. Designated hitter, Andrew Grafal. So the first two batters are quickly retired and now Andrew Griffel, the designated hitter, is digging in and set to bat. First pitch swung on and lofted foul. The old one from McLean, breaking ball. Just out of the zone, ball one. McLean bringing the heat on that one, and Griffal swings and misses. One and two is the count. As we alluded to earlier, the Rattlers were victorious in both games of the doubleheader yesterday. Coming from behind in the first game, and then a complete game, seven inning shutout was pitched by Rene Solis. The Rattlers won that game by a score of three to nothing. As Griffal takes that pitch foul and out of play. Two and two now the count. And that one swung on and hit hard to right. Looking up and it is gone. A home run for Andrew Griffel as he got a hold of one and that one lofted and out of here. And that's good for the first run of the ball game. Third baseman, Trey Cochran. And now up to the plate is the third baseman, Trey Cochran. Cochran batting 253 on the year. Swings at that pitch and unable to make the play is Gonzalez as the ball sailed out of his reach. 
And the two out rally continues as Cochran is able to reach on a single. Now up to the plate is the left-handed batter, Neil Madsen. He takes that pitch for a ball, 1-0. And that pitch high, 2-1-0, now the count to Madsen. And that pitch in there for strike one, 2-1-1, and one. now the count. Matt McLean in his eighth start of the year. Already a no-hitter to his name this season as he checks over to first. The 2-1 from McLean fouled back and that evens up the count at two balls and two strikes. The 2-2 from McLean paints the outside corner for strike three. After giving up two consecutive hits, McLean is able to retire the side with his second strikeout of the ball game. UTPB able to score a run off a home run from Griffall. They lead one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the first. You're watching Rattler Baseball here on the Rattler Network. With 12 premier institutions across four states, the members of the Heartland Conference are proud partners of their communities and NCAA Division II. We are committed to the academic and athletic success of our student athletes. The Heartland Conference offers a vibrant championship experience with schools that are nationally competitive, engaged with their communities, and supported by hundreds of thousands of fans who promote a positive game environment. To learn more about the Heartland Conference, visit us at heartlandsports.org. Choose Division II. Choose the Heartland Conference. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the first inning about to get underway. But first, we remind all of you that next Tuesday will be Neon Night over at the softball stadium when the, na the nationally ranked number five Rattler softball team will take on Angelo State. Fans who attend the game wearing neon will be entered to win free oyster bake tickets and food coupons, which will be given away throughout each game of their doubleheader, which starts at 4 p.m. For more information, be sure to check out RattlerAthletics.com. And now leading off the bottom of the first for the Rattlers, is Brooks Orton. Orton batting 255 
on the year with 11 RBIs. And that first pitch is in there for strike one from Fairchild. Lance Fairchild, the starting pitcher this afternoon for UTPB, has a 1 in 3 record with a 3.44 ERA. <coughs> this is going to this is the 7th game Fairchild is starting and his ninth appearance on the year. And the one two to Orton is high and outside two and two. Let's meet the defensive lineup for UTPB. Over at left field is Andrade. At center is Kowal. Ryan Head is over at right as this one is hit sharply to second. There to make the play is David Lee who throws the first in time for out number one. Over at third for the Falcons is Cochran. Braidman is at short. Lee, who we just mentioned, is at second. Madsen is at first. And catching for Lance Fairchild is Eric as Drake Roberts swings at the first pitch and lines one to center for a single. Second baseman, Mario Maldonado. And Roberts able to add to his totals. Batting 290 on the year. Able to get that one out single. And now up to bat is Mario Maldonado. Mario batting 277 with four home runs and 21 RBIs as he takes that pitch for strike one. In yesterday's doubleheader, Mario grounded into two double plays. Let's see if he can avoid that predicament here as he fouls that one away 0-2. On deck for the Rattlers is the designated hitter, Omar Garcia. The 0-2 pitch is swung on to opposite field over at right. Out of the reach of head, and Roberts will come around and score, and it will be a stand-up RBI triple for Mario Maldonado. And the Rattlers quickly... Evening up this ball game at one apiece. Designated hitter, Omar Garcia. Maldonado able to take the pitch to opposite field. And the ball rolled into the corner, allowing him to reach third unharmed as Omar Garcia takes the first pitch for ball one. The 1 0 pitch. Off speed pitch outside, ball two. The 2 0 pitch tails inside to Omar Garcia, bringing the count to 3 0. And Garcia able to draw a four-pitch walk. And that'll bring up Joe Hermsen. 
Hermsen in the first game of the doubleheader yesterday got the big base hit which scored the tying runs in the Rattler comeback in the first game and Joe takes the first pitch for a called strike one Hermsen shows bunt and he lays one down squeeze play and Rattler is able to score another run as Hermsen is able to beat the throw. A peculiar situation right there. Fairchild was able to field it, but he delayed his throw and now two Rattlers on with only one out and Al Gonzalez at the plate. And Gonzalez takes the first pitch for strike one. The 0 1 pitch to Gonzalez is low and inside. Ball two. And Gonzalez lofts one to shallow left. And there to make the play is Andrade for the second out of the inning. Catcher Kitty Funk. And now that will bring up the catcher, Keith Funk. Runners on first and second. Hermsen over at first, Garcia at second. The first pitch to Funk is in there for strike one. Funk batting 232 on the year with 20 RBIs. And time is called. And Funk pokes at that one. And it is right to the pitcher, Fairchild, who's able to make the throw in time for the final out of the inning. Rattlers able to bounce back, taking the lead 2-1 to one as we head to the top of the second inning. UTPB due up next. You're watching Rattler Baseball here on the Rattler Network.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the second inning just about to get underway. We remind all of you, if you haven't yet, be sure to check out rattlergear.com, St. Mary's Athletics online store full of hundreds of products. Shop baseball shirts, sweaters, polos, and your very own personalized Rattler baseball jersey. Check every month for special deals going on right now. All Rattler caps are 10% off. That's rattlergear.com. Be sure to shop blue and gold. Leading off the inning for the Falcons is their catcher, Ryan Eric. Brian Magliuan, Joe Rodriguez here with you. And Matt McClain got tagged up early with a solo blast from Andrew Griffel, who was the starting pitcher in the series opener last last evening. Mm hmm yeah, we and started to see more and more of those super athletes who can both pitch and hit. It's just something that we see more often in college, but once you get to uh, a step up from this, then it's not so much anymore. And already three strikeouts for Matt McClain as he deals now to uh, the shortstop, Ryan Braidman. Yeah, McLean's one of those guys who, uh, we've seen it before, if he gets rolling with the strikeouts, he can get it going. In fact, in his no-hitter earlier on in the year, he had uh, a streak of, I believe, five strikeouts in a row where he's just mowing down every single batter he saw. It was actually six, because I remember thinking that he and Funk could have been the only two to go out there, and they would have been able <laughs> to get the innings done. And you, of course, Joe, called that no-hitter that magical night here at Dixon Stadium. Mm -hmm. One and two, the count. That one hit over to short. Spinning and throwing is Gonzalez. And he's able to gun down Braidman for the second out of the inning. And good footwork there by Al on the spin. It's one of those things where if you need to get the momentum behind your throw, it's a quick way to do it. The only problem with it is uh, if you do it wrong, then your accuracy is all over the place. But Al did it very, very nicely right there. Now up to the plate is Daniel Andrade. And he takes that first pitch for strike one. Andrade batting 209 this season. That's right. Yeah. And has two RBIs to his name. He'll look to get on with two outs here in the top of the second inning. One and two, now the count. The one two from McLean lofted over to center and a two out single for Daniel Andrade. Yeah, I think that's one McLean would like to have back. I mean, it's a one and two count. You're ahead. You have every advantage in the world. And then he went on ahead and went after Andrade. Not a bad decision right there, but, you know, Andrade, he was able to get a hold of one, was able to uh, deposit it into center field. And this is the second time, well, make it third time that McLean has allowed a hit with two outs. In the top of the first, yielded a home run with two outs and then a single thereafter. And here, Andrade reaches with a single with two outs. And Kowal takes that pitch for a ball 2-0 and now. And that pitch lofted to right center field. There to make the play is Brooks Orton for the final out of the inning. The Falcons leave one runner on, on one hit. They score nothing, however, and the score remains 2-1 to one as we head to the bottom half of the second. Rattlers do up next, right here on the Rattler Network. 
With 12 premier institutions across four states, the members of the Heartland Conference are proud partners of their communities and NCAA Division II. We are committed to the academic and athletic success of our student athletes. The Heartland Conference offers a vibrant championship experience with schools that are nationally competitive, engaged with their communities, and supported by hundreds of thousands of fans who promote a positive game environment. To learn more about the Heartland Conference, visit us at heartlandsports.org. Choose Division II. Choose the Heartland Conference. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the second inning here inside Dixon Stadium. The 8, 9, and 1 hitters do up for the Rattlers this inning. Adrian Garcia leading things off. And look to see Adrian lead off strong here. He was in the leadoff spot earlier on in the year, but since has been relegated down to the 8 spot. Hitting 248 on the year, though, and is on base percentage is 348 so that's very solid one and two the count here to Adrian Fairchild delivers and Adrian lofts one over to left and down there to track it down is Andrade for the first out of the inning and that'll bring up the left fielder, Scott Jones. That's one of those ones where you're just talking the ball. As soon as it leaves your bat, you're just like, get out, get out. <laughs> <laughs> the first pitch to Jones is bunted at, but fouled away 0-1. And, and based on everyone's reaction time, I think Jones had a pretty good chance of reaching right there. The corner infielders are playing back. So with the speed of Jones, he probably would have been able to have a chance at beating out the throw as he takes that pitch high and inside. Ball one. 287 hitter on the year is Jones. Couple of extra base hits, 11 RBIs. He had himself a whale of a game in the first doubleheader. He went three for three a couple of walks scored a couple of runs had a stolen base two and <laughs> I made the remark that if he was a uh, if we were playing fantasy baseball I'd want Scott Jones on my <laughs> team that day two and two you much of a fantasy baseball player Brian I actually do have a fantasy baseball team as Jones chops one over to short and Oh, great Ooh, stretch. by half a step, Jones is beat. Great throw by Braidman over at short, and an even greater stretch by Madsen at first to gun down Roberts, or excuse me, Jones. That was a great defensive play there, but to answer your question, yes, I do have my very own fantasy baseball team. Uh, we're not doing that great, but not that bad either. I'm in the the mi mid level, middle if you will, of the pack. middle of the pack. There you go of our fantasy baseball league. But I know that you have your fantasy team as well. So how how are you guys doing? Uh, we're terrible as always. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, always get the big name players, but some way somehow they just never work together. I always hit a lot of home runs though, but I don't think I've quite grasped fantasy baseball quite yet and I, I actually I find myself in a very serious league with a, a scout from the Rangers and Ooh. a couple of other people across baseball and 
you know, I, I kind of just play casually, so <laughs> I just draft who I know, and then, you know, these guys take me to school. <laughs> uh, three and one the count now to Brooks Orton. Brooks Orton 0 for 1 so far in this ball game. Swings at the 3-1 delivery, and that one ah, that hurts. fouled off his foot, and Orton trying to shake it off there. As he limps out of the box. Man, I can tell you from experience, that's never fun. <laughs> Usually just got to give yourself 30 seconds to allow it to go away, and then you're good to go. And that's the same way that uh, the soon-to-be-retired Derek Jeter injured himself uh, two years ago in the postseason. Mm -hmm. Fouling off a, a ball off his foot and... Ultimately, you know, the continuous pounding led to the stress fracture in his ankle, which put him out essentially for all of last season. The full count to Orton, and that one hit over to left, just foul. And we'll see another pitch in this at bat. Man, he missed that one by about two feet. Ugh. And he would have been on his way for extra bases, bad foot and all. <laughs> <laughs> But as it is, full count still two away. Fairchild winding and dealing. That one grounded to second. There to make the play is David Lee for the final out of the inning. Rattlers unable to score any here in the bottom half they still lead two to one however as we head to the top of the third inning stay with us you're watching rattler baseball here on the rattler network we have so much to celebrate in division two we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish division two student athletes the 10th initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly million dollars have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the third, about to get started. And that first pitch from Matt McClain tails out of the zone for a ball one. McClain going right back to that curve ball, and that one, same result, ball two now. 2-0 two oh the count to their the leadoff hitter, Ryan Head. Head, of course, had himself a great game in the first game of the doubleheader. Chops that one to first, and unable to get a read on it is Hermsen. And they will charge that an error to Joe. And that's a funky one right there. I mean, a little bit of precipitation coming down on the field earlier in the game. I'm not sure if it's still raining. I can't tell from the booth, but... When you have that, it can give you some weird kicks, a little bit softer than you're used to, but that time it just kicked up on Joe and he wasn't able to get it. Bunt is shown and is laid down the line. 
I think that one might have gone foul if Joe had led it, but I think he decided to take the out. So, one, one out here in the top of the third inning. Head able to advance over to second. And now up to the plate is the DH, Andrew Griffall, who homered his first time up. He is only the second home run that Matt McLean has allowed this season. And you'll know Matt will want to try to redeem himself after allowing the homer in the first as that one is fouled away on one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of people who got to see that homer firsthand were actually uh, the Rowdy Rattlers. You see them out there in center field. They, uh, they're actually having themselves a little bit of a cookout there. They got the barbecue going and, you know, they got some hot dogs and hampers. I was a little bit late getting to the game, I'll admit it. I, I slept in. Can you believe it? All the way to <laughs> 1 o'clock. I don't think I've done that since I was 16 or so. <laughs> But I guess I needed the rest, but they offered me a hot dog on the way here, <laughs> and uh, I had to decline because I was hustling on over. <laughs> <laughs> One and two now the count to Griffall, and I don't blame you for oversleeping after that marathon of a game in the first of the doubleheader and then calling the second game, which was a shutout pitched by Rene Solis. We had a lot of action going on yesterday as the 1-2 pitch is fouled away. Oh, we're going to have even more action going on today. I mean, we're going to have the baseball game, of course. And then uh, we have the Rattler Nation social that's going to be going on. That's going to be a ton of fun. And then more importantly, we got the friendly tonight. Uh, some a little bit of footy. Uh, <laughs> Brian McGluyuan, David Tova will be on the call. It's going to be an exciting affair between Our Lady of the Lake University, a friendly with the new St. Mary squad who helped to find themselves in form. That was beautifully done. That was excellent. <laughs> and our very own David Tovar saying that it is a tall task to top. <laughs> after that one but we will definitely try as I have to say I, I, I've been watching myself some soccer lately uh, th we talked about the friendly between the United States and Mexico I've mm -hmm. been watching that I've also been watching some of uh, La Liga play I've been watching some of the Premier League really just uh, trying to get myself into the sport and into form myself for uh, the World Cup this year McLean sets and deals in that one high and inside. Full count now to Griffel. Head still o over at second. He has good speed over there, so expect him to try to score on any single. That one lofted into foul territory and out of play. And the count will remain at three and two. Now, as a pitcher, after you give up a home run and you, the next time you face the same batter, what's your mentality when you face that batter right after that home run? Well, see McClain get the strike out there. Usually, what I try to do is try, just give him my best stuff, honestly. Uh, don't throw him that same pitch that you gave the home rough run on him with. Uh, for example, if you threw him a curveball on the outside part of the plate, don't throw him that one again. Because there's something about the way the brain works where if it sees a same pitch uh, in the same location, it, it thinks to do the same thing with it, which would be to hit another home run with it. Uh, so... What you do is you go with other stuff and you try to stay away from that one and save it for maybe later on in the game so that you can still use it. I mean, you're not going to hamstring yourself of one pitch for the rest of the day, but 
usually you got to go at them and the first thing that I would usually want to do is just throw them a fastball on the inside part of the plate just to let them know that you're not going to back down from them. Now up to bat is Trey Cochran who singled his first time up and that breaking ball in there for strike one, one and one the count. McLean already with four strikeouts in this ball game. And when you have a strikeout pitcher out there on the mound, it helps you out a whole lot more than you think. Like, usually you think to yourself that it wouldn't matter as long as you're able to get the outs, but if you have a strikeout hitter out there, then it helps you out in so many spots because when you get in a situation where any kind of ball in play would hurt you a whole bunch, when you're able to get that strikeout, that strikeout by digging deep, it helps you so, so much. And that curveball in there for strike two, the count all even at two balls and two strikes. So we see the clouds start to move over the field. So the light's already on. I think we're going to be looking for some lightning out here. Runner goes to third. Got him. And unable to apply the tag is Roberts as Head is able to steal third. And that was a great slide. Roberts, he was behind the bag. And so Head, he pointed that toe toward the corner that's uh, the closest to home plate and he is able to get to it. It will be a full count now and a good time to steal a bag for head right there. The throw is on point by Funk though. And that pitch lined back towards our vicinity and foul. The count will remain at three balls and two strikes. And Roberts over at third got a late jump on it, I believe, and which allowed Head to slide in just before the tag was applied. Yeah, I think he was playing in a in a way to try to not let anything by him. It's called guarding the line. And what you do is you play a lot deeper than you usually do as a third baseman. And that way, if anything's hit sharply down the line, you're still able to make a play on it and not allow a runner to score from second. And that ball hit back, and Cochran and McLean battling in this at bat. And time is called. Now if you're McLean, you got to be wondering yourself, oh, what do I got? What? What's my out pitch right here? I mean, they've been battling for a bit. Cochran's been spoiling everything. And that pitch runs inside for ball four. A two-out walk. It looked like it hit him, actually. But it's the same result regardless. Cochran over at first now. First baseman, Neil Madsen. With Madsen at the plate. Madsen struck out his first time up. And the only way that... A hit by pitch is different from a base on balls, for those of you wondering. Is that after a base on balls, uh, the ball is still live. You can still try to steal a base or move on after it. Uh, in fact, in my little league, what we used to do is whenever we got a base on balls, we uh, this was when we were very, very young. We, If the ball went past the catcher and to the backstop, we would sprint to first base and then immediately turn and run to second mm. because we figured that the catcher would never have a good enough arm to throw us out <laughs> and that also the uh, the catcher would kind of be lazy in getting back to the ball because it's still a live ball. A hit by pitch, meanwhile, it's a dead ball. So if you get hit by a pitch, the only base that you can take is that first base if you're the runner and then if anyone else is forced then they take that base so a hit by pitch like for that example uh, let's just say that the ball had hit Cochran and then gotten away from Funk head would not have been allowed to come around and try to score a run 
because the ball would have been dead. And that baseball fact of the day is brought to you by none other than our very own Joe Rodriguez. One and two of the count to <laughs> Madsen. A little bit more baseball knowledge every day. And that is strikeout number five for Matt McClain as he rings up Madsen. Runners left on the corners for the Falcons, and they don't score any as the score remains 2-1. to one. Rattlers lead as we head to the bottom of the third inning. You're watching Rattler Baseball here on the Rattler Network. so much to celebrate in Division 2, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division 2 student athletes have the 10 initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $1 million has been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bottom of the third inning. Uh, underway here, Drake Roberts. His bunt attempt is fouled away in a dangerous fashion in which the ball popped up. We saw him fly out on a bunt attempt in yesterday's double header. Mm -hmm. You have to know that Coach Meagle and the Rattler coaching staff were not at all, all pleased on that one. The count all even at one ball and one strike. Oof. Got tied and up on that one. Roberts a little bit ahead of that pitch as he got caught chasing. One and two now the count to the right-handed batter, Roberts. Good discipline there, letting the ball tail outside for ball two. I wonder if Fairchild will go back to that off-speed pitch good. No, nope, straight heat. And that one gets past the third baseman, Cochran, for a lead-off single. Beautifully done by Drake Roberts. And that will bring up Mario Maldonado to the plate. Mario one for one today with an RBI. I'm sure the Rattlers would take a similar result right here. Instead he's showing bunt. Mario with that RBI triple his first time up in the bottom of the first inning. That's crazy right there. You think to yourself, oh, this is your number three hitter. He tripled his last time up. Ah, I'm going to go on ahead and ask him to bunt. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0 pitch out of the zone. And gunned down at second and caught stealing is Roberts. That was a great throw by Eric over to, I believe, Braidman, who is covering the bag. And Coach Meagle will 
check and chat with the umpire who made the call. Uh, it's one of those things where there's only two umpires at these games. If there were four, then there might have been an umpire with a better view of it, but nothing really that Coach Meagle can do there but discuss. Uh, <laughs> the replay booth? <laughs> <laughs> Tough break there, but from my vantage point at least, it looked like the throw got there in time. Yeah, the throw definitely was in there in time. The question is, was the tag applied? I mean, we saw a great stolen base over at third by head earlier on in the top half of the inning where the tag was just missed. That off-speed pitch swung on and missed by Maldonado for strike two. Yeah, that changeup is starting to look really nice for Fairchild. Mario lofts one to shallow center field, giving chase to it is Kowal. Wow. And a beautiful diving catch <laughs> saves potential extra bases on that one, and that is good for the second out of this inning. <laughs> Love the reaction from the Falcons dugout. A couple of the players taking their hats off to him. <laughs> wow, Kowal got a bad read on it off the bat and had to make quite a journey from center and was able to make the diving catch as Omar Garcia takes that pitch for strike one. Omar fouls that one away. 0-2 is the count. Omar walked his first time up and is quickly down in the count 0-2. That pitch high and outside, ball one. And even though there's no one on base, you kind of would really like to see a Rattler get on right here in Omar Garcia. And Omar does just that as he's able to lift one over the outstretched arm of David Lee at second. And mark it down as a two-out single for Garcia. And now at the plate is Joe Hermsen, who is one for one with an RBI. Joe Hermsen really becoming one of those can't miss players for me. Or actually, uh, you can't miss their at bat. You have to tune in and watch because he's really become an exciting player to watch at the plate. I like his approach, he's very patient up there. But once he gets a hold of one, then it can be game-changing for St. Mary's. And that one fouled off by Hermsen. One and one. And just a guy who plays the game the right way, too. I mean, he fouls one off right there. You know it's clearly foul, but Joe makes sure that he gets out of his stance and heads down that first baseline. You never know. Ball might hit a rock and then come back into fair territory. Nonetheless, we'll see another pitch in this at bat. Garcia over at first, two outs. The 1-1 one -one pitch. And Hermsen able to take that one for ball two. Fairchild sets and deals, and that one grounded over to third, bobbled by the third baseman Cochran and the throw over to first is bounced off the first baseman Madsen and runners are safe runners at the corners for the Rattlers that was a good job by Madsen right there laying his body in front of the ball it's probably he possibly prevented a run from scoring right there in all reality, and he definitely prevented Hermsen from taking an extra bag. Madsen took one right in the chest. 
And now Al Gonzalez at the plate takes that pitch for ball one. Yep. Runners at the corners, a little two out rally going right here. See what the boys in blue can do. And the Rattlers, when given an opportunity, they normally make you pay. And that one swung on and lifted to left. Under it is Andrade. And all threats are put to rest as the Rattlers leave two on base. And now we head to the bottom of the third inning. Score remains two to one. Excuse me, top of the fourth inning. Score remains two to one as UTPB gets set to take their swings. Stay tuned. More upcoming here on the Rattler Network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the fourth inning. About to get underway. Leading off for the Falcons is Ryan Eric, who struck out his first time at the plate. It'll be Braidman and Andrade to follow after him. That breaking ball swung on and hit over to short. And a great diving stop by Gonzalez. The throw not in time. And mark it as a leadoff single for Ryan Eric. <laughs> and Gonzalez is so tall out there at short that he's able to get to just about any anything hit on the ground a lot of the time. And that one, <laughs> that one though, uh, wasn't able to get much on the throw. And so Hermson was pulled off the bag over there at first. And the first pitch to Braidman is in there for strike one. Bunt being shown here. And it is hit right back to McLean, who checks over to second, but decides to go to first for out number one. Good decision there by McLean, and now he's in the same situation he was last half inning, runner on second base and one away. Digging in for the Falcons is Daniel Andrade, who's one for one in this ball game. McLean awaiting his sign. Curveball in there for strike one. And what I've noticed from McLean is that he's let off most of the at-bats, if not all, with that breaking curveball. Yeah, he's throwing it for a strike very nicely here today, so if his fastball isn't locating quite like he wants to, then I see no reason why he shouldn't lead it off with that curveball. 
The only thing is, if he doesn't locate that curveball w well once, then he could be taken for a ride. And that pitch is fouled back, one and two. The count to Andrade. And it's not like McLean doesn't have a good fastball. He does. It's just that he might be feeling more comfortable the second and third time through the lineup with his off-speed stuff. The one, two. Swung on and fouled back once again. On deck is Colin Kowal. And time is called. We remind you, Rattler fans, to be sure to follow us on social media. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash St. Mary's Rattlers. And be sure to follow us on Twitter as that ball is hit to right center and it drops for a base hit. Eric will hold at third, uh, and that is a one-out single for Andrade. Good thing Eric did hold at third right there. You could tell he wanted to go, but I think he would have been out by at least half of the base path. And we remind you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at St. Mary's Rattlers. Stay up to date with all the latest Rattler news and look out for social media contests as McLean checks over to Andrade at first. So be runners on the corners, one away, two to one the score for the Rattlers. McLean checks over to first again. Looks like he's willing to throw the fastball on over to Hermsen over there. <laughs> Kowal at the plate, 0 for 1 so far. And I'd be interested to see what he's looking to do here. Yesterday, the Falcons did try to run a squeeze play at one point in the game. They were unsuccessful as the pitch was well outside. But now with their number 9 hitter at the plate, I'd be interested to see if something tricky might be on here. I mean, it is a one-run game, so you don't know. But 0-2, the count now kind of makes it more unlikely. If McLean could get a double play, that would be quite the way to end the inning as he checks over to Andrade at first. Runners at the corners, one out. McLean delivers, and that one in on the hands, and it is fouled back. And this is uh, another one of the things where my point about being a strikeout pitcher helping you out a ton uh, becomes relevant. If McLean's able to get a strikeout here instead of having a pop out or a ground out, it kind of, well, it definitely forces the runner to stay at third base. You know, McLean, he's looking for the strikeout first and foremost with the 0 2 count here. And that one swung on and fouled away once again. Kowal proving to be a tough at bat here. And Kowal, he may be the number nine hitter for the Falcons, but when Head wasn't starting in the second game of the double header, Kowal was the leadoff man. So you know he has pretty good ability up there at the plate. He can take care of business. Kowal third on the Falcon ball club in batting average with a 276 average to go along with six RBIs. 1-2 the count. McLean deals. And that one lined right to second, and Maldonado looks the runners back. And that's two away. Right fielder, Ryan Head. 
And we return to the top of the order. Ryan Head at the plate. 0 for 2 thus far. And Head's proved to be a dangerous hitter, though, so far in this series. He had that 3 for 3 game in the. Sorry, a 3 for 4 game in the first game of the doubleheader yesterday before his day was cut short when he was ejected after arguing balls and strikes. And that pitch runs high and inside. 1-0. and oh. McLean coming set. Here's the pitch. That one swung on and missed. Nicely done there by Matt. And we see this from time to time where McLean, he just puts it into another gear and he becomes Matt McSlain. <laughs> <laughs> and that pitch tails outside. Two balls, one strike, two head. McLean sets and throws in that one. Tapped foul. The two two pitch in there. For a called strike three, McLean bringing the heat on that one. And that's strikeout number six for Mick Slane, as you put it. <laughs> Rattlers able to hold UTPB scoreless once again as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Rattlers do up next. Stay tuned. Rattler baseball right here on the Rattler Network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the fourth inning. About to get started. Leading off for the Rattlers is catcher Keith Funk. The seven, eight, nine hitters are due up this inning. Funk, Garcia, and Jones. Keith 0 for 1 so far in the ball game. Swings at that one, and it is... Grounded up the middle for a base hit. A leadoff single for Keith Funk, who brings the funk here this afternoon yeah. with a leadoff single. I love this part of the order. We got two good back-to-back -back hitters, Funk and Garcia, and both of them have very nice celebrations whenever they get a base <laughs> hit. And funk, of course, he brings the funk, and then... Adrian, yo, Adrian. <laughs> uh, 
all a part of the new Dixon Stadium here inside the parks at St. Mary's. Garcia takes that pitch for ball one. Fairchild is giving up seven hits now. Himself a decent game. And First. that bond attempt is fouled back. And you can see Coach Meagle <laughs> growing a little bit older and older with every missed bump bunt opportunity here. <laughs> <laughs> and every time that a bunt is lofted into the air. Oh, man. And a pitch out and sliding in safely is Funk over at first. Good attempt there by Permian Base, and they almost got him, but the throw just a tad bit too high, and the slide by Funk was very good. Again, though, that play is dangerous, and we've seen the Falcons run it several times because all Adrian has to do is pepper a ball over to second base, and then it'll be a runner sh surely on first and third. As that one was fouled off, and count will now be one and two. Two and two, two and now two. the count. Here's the pickoff throw over to Funk, who slides in safely. Two and two, still the count. Our scoreboard is now functioning. Thank you for the count, Umpire. You hear an announcement the scoreboard malfunctioning? David broke it. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> that one grounded over to first, and that's a great job there by Garcia, able to line one past <laughs> Madsen over at first, and Rattlers able to start off the inning with two batters able to reach base, and now Scott Jones will step right in and try to add on to the amount of Rattlers reaching base. So first we bring the funk and then yo Adrian, we did it. <laughs> Good part of the order coming up and Scott Jones will look to keep this singles rally going. Jones 0 for 1. Wheel plays on, actually pick off. And Funk able to slide in safely to second. And yeah, Jones, he didn't show his hand right there. He didn't go around for a bunt or anything of that sort. Kept his hands at the base of his bat. So now that he's seen that, w that play on, we'll see if the bunt is indeed on. And Jones shows bunt but he did go around one around so the count at 0 and 1 so the one the count fairchild coming set yeah, you see a lot of happy feet, so you knew the wheel was on. Play is over to third. Oh, and the throw is high. And Funk able to slide in safely, and runners are safe at all the bases. Bases loaded for Brooks Orton. Yeah, here comes the top of the order now as the bottom part did their job. Won't be any base hit there for Scott Jones. He'll have reached on a fielder's choice, but no Rattlers out. And now the infield will play in for the Falcons. And 
Nobody out here. Bases loaded for the Rattlers. Now, golden opportunity to try to blow this one open. The pitch from Fairchild in there for strike one. Here's the 0 1 pitch from Fairchild. Swung on and hit right at the second baseman Lee and one run will score make it two now and a two RBI single by Brooks Orton gives the Rattlers the 4-1 lead yeah, that's the problem with playing your infield in to try to cut off a run if one smoked at you you have to try to protect yourself and next thing you know the ball's through to the outfield and a couple of runs are crossing the board. Garcia and Funk scoring on that play. Jones advancing to third and that'll bring up Drake Roberts who is two for two this afternoon. Yeah, he's been hot tonight. And Roberts swings at the first pitch and it is fouled right on top of the Rattler hitting cages over in right. Roberts, he's also scored a run today. Yes. And he was caught stealing once as well. Thank you. Can you do it again? And that pitch high, one and one the count. Hey, the scoreboard's fixed. <laughs> David Tovar say he's clutch like Jita. <laughs> Robert's showing bunt on that play and that one fouled off. One and two. David Tovar, multi-talented. He's really a do-it-all for you. Yeah, so if you want to if you want to hire David, take him off our hands, please do. <laughs> <laughs> at Tovar's Be sure to tweet him at Tovar's Take. <laughs> Read up on all the things that, uh, opinions that he's had. I believe the top, the top food at Oyster Bake on the current Tovar's Take. <laughs> the top five Oyster Bake foods is listed in mm -hmm. the most recent Tovar's Take. Yep as Orton is able to steal second. Infield playing in once again. Robert swings at that one and that will be another base hit. And that will score two more runs as the Rattlers Bust this game wide open. They now lead 6-1 to one off a single by Drake Roberts, who is now 3-for-3 three three on the afternoon. Man, you could tell he really liked that hit as soon as he got a little bit of a bat flip on the single. And there are still no outs with Mario Maldonado up at the plate. And now looks like we're going to have a visit from the skipper of the Falcons. Five straight base hits for the Rattlers to start off this inning. I think that would draw a visit from the manager of just about any team. They got an arm warming up in the bullpen, but it doesn't look like they will change pitchers just yet. Rattlers <laughs> able to score four runs here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And it looks like a change will indeed be made. We'll go on ahead and tell you back about it after this break. 
Rattlers now lead it 6-1 to one as we play here in the bottom of the fourth. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are still in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Rattlers in the midst of a four-run rally. And a pitching change was made over the break. Now pitching for the Falcons is Kyle Bandujo, making his ninth appearance this season, all of them in relief. He has a 5.6 ERA, and that first pitch out of the zone for ball one. Eight strikeouts as compared to two base on balls, so good ratio right there. As that one's grounded over on a hop to third, throw across the diamond is in time by Cochran, and Maldonado is retired for the first out of the inning. So five Rattlers in a row were able to reach before Maldonado went down, but now it'll be Omar Garcia at the plate. And if you're Kyle Bandujo, what what do you do after, you know, you saw the starting pitcher give up four straight runs to begin the inning, and now your team is trailing by five runs? Well, the only thing you really can do is just pound the strike zone. You can't really be too fine. You have to just go out there and you know, allow your fielders to make plays for you. And that way, you'll get some outs on the board and be able to get your team still going. Roberts over at second. At the plate is Omar Garcia, and he takes that pitch for ball two. Roberts, he's over three on stolen bags on the year, even though he just bluffed one right there. And Garcia quickly ahead in the count, three and zero. Oh. Yeah, I doubt that he'd try to steal a bag right here. You have uh, your best bats coming up to the plate, and then you know you're already in scoring position, so any single would most likely score you anyway. And a four-pitch walk is assessed to Omar Garcia. And that will bring up Joe Hermsen, who is two for two this afternoon. Well, the walk isn't the end of the world for Bandujo and the Falcons. It puts the double play back into effect. But then again, of course, there's always the negative effect. You put another runner on for Joe Hermsen. And Joe Herm's in a dangerous batter as they check over to second. They got him. And they're able to pick off Roberts, who fell asleep on the base path right there. And that is good for the second out. A big out 
for UTPB. Yeah, Roberts, he flinched right there. He started to make a move over toward third base, and then that caused him to not get his feet set to dive back to second in time. A good pickoff move by Bandujo, and he's retired. One and the count here to Hermson. And that one tails away, 2-0. and oh. A slight breeze going from left to right as Hermsen pops that one high into shallow right. There to make the play is head for the final out of the inning. Rattlers leave one runner on, but they score four in the bottom half of this inning. We head to the top of the fifth inning. Rattlers lead 6-1 to one as you're watching Rattler Baseball here on the Rattler Network. With 12 premier institutions across four states, the members of the Heartland Conference are proud partners of their communities and NCAA Division II. We are committed to the academic and athletic success of our student athletes. The Heartland Conference offers a vibrant championship experience with schools that are nationally competitive, engaged with their communities, and supported by hundreds of thousands of fans who promote a positive game environment. To learn more about the Heartland Conference, visit us at heartlandsports.org. Choose Division II. Choose the Heartland Conference. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the fifth inning about to get underway. Brian Magliuan, Joe Rodriguez here with you, bringing you the series finale between the St. Mary's Rattlers and the University of Texas Permian Basin Falcons. The two, three hitters, the two, three, and four hitters are due up this half of the inning. Matt McLean still dealing for the Rattlers as this count is even at one ball and one strike. Now two and one. At the plate is David Lee. <laughs> and the two one is swung on and fouled away. That Brings the count even at two balls and two strikes. And that ball is grounded over to third. There to make the play is Roberts for the first out of the inning. And I can tell you that's not an easy play to make right there. On the run, you got to throw it across your body and still get it across the diamond accurately but Drake made it look simple and now at the plate is Andrew Griffel and something I noticed by the way during that big inning that the Rattlers were having McLean instead of just staying put in the dugout and uh, hanging out for lack of a better phrase <laughs> like uh, pitchers usually do he, uh, he was up on the uh, right field side and he was kind of throwing with someone not throwing hard or anything just throwing it gently in order to make sure his arm stayed warm as that one is skied to the warning track for the second out of the inning and that one looked eerily similar to the home run Griffall hit in the first yeah. inning fortunately the ball was able to die down at the warning track for the second out of the inning 
Yeah, I'm sure Griff Hall is thinking to himself that he just missed out on his second dinger of the day. And now at the plate is Trey Cochran, who is one for one this afternoon. He takes that first pitch for ball one. McLean deals, and that pitch is lofted to right center. Under it is Brooks Orton, and a quick 1-2-3 inning as UTPB unable to get anything going. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Rattlers lead 6-1. to one. Stay tuned. More upcoming right here on the Rattler Network. So much to celebrate in Division Two. We're especially proud of our commitment to make a win. Division Two student athletes led a 10 initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly three million dollars have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the fifth inning. Just underway. Leading off for the Rattlers is Al Gonzalez. And following that pitch by Bandujo, the count all even at one apiece. And now two and one. Is that one off the plate? Bandujo. Seems to be working a bit quick in contrast to the last inning as he falls behind 3-1-2 and one to Al. Yeah, well, last inning, whenever he was working, he always had someone on base, so I think we'll get to see his more natural pace now, but as I just say that, he allows Al on base with a leadoff walk. Catcher Keith Funk. And that will bring up... Keith Funk, who is one for two so far this afternoon. Yeah, Funk was responsible for starting that rally in the bottom of the fourth inning. So he had that uh, very nice single. And breaking ball finds the plate. 0 oh and 1 to Keith. Gonzalez, decent speed over there at first. He's able to get himself a huge lead just because of how tall he is. And, and Funk. Funk lifting that one over Lee's head at second and sliding in safely to third is Al Gonzalez. And once again, Keith bringing the Funk. And different pitcher, same result for Keith. Nice little looper over there into right field and good hustle by Al going from first all the way to third. For Aller fans, don't forget about Neon Night next Tuesday, hosted by the number five nationally ranked Rattler softball team. Fans who attend the game, located at the park at St. Mary's, wearing neon will be entered to win free oyster bake tickets and food coupons which will be given away throughout each game of their doubleheader against Angelo State, which starts at 4 p.m. For more information, visit rattlerathletics.com. Adrian Garcia digging in now. Want to know the count? We'll see what Banduho can do with runners at the corners. On well inside. 
Adrian will lift the bat on up and 2-0 and now. And this is eerily similar to how the previous inning began. Rattler batters reaching base with nobody out as that one able to drop in and that will be an RBI single for Adrian Garcia as that will easily score <laughs> Al Gonzalez and yo Adrian <laughs> he did it again I wonder if Funk and Garcia get as much pleasure out of hearing <laughs> their uh, their soundtracks of success as we do <laughs> and a brief timeout is called as Eric giving words of encouragement to Banduho on the mound. Scott Jones now at the plate. And that ball in the dirt. Great block there by Eric. Able to keep the runners at their respective bases. Funk and Garcia on base. Funk at second. Garcia over at first. And those two are becoming quite the duo here in today's game. The 1-0 to Jones in there for strike one. One and one the count. Jones, he's 0 for 1 today. Brooks Orton waiting on deck along with the top of the order. And that ball low and inside. 2 and 1 the count to Jones. If I'm Jones, very, very patient is the approach here right now. Two and two. That's a great time to come with the breaking ball right there if you're Ben Duho. I wasn't expecting that one at all, and I don't think Jones was either as it settled right on in there for a called strike. Went Another breaking two. ball right there, and that will bring the count full three and two. I don't think he figured out if he's not expecting it on two and one. He's not going to be expecting it on two and two. Just missed with it. And Banduho bringing the heat. Potential double play ball there, but beating out the throw is Scott Jones as it will be runners at the corners with one out. And that's why you run all those wind sprints during the off season. If you're Scott Jones, go on ahead, beat that one out. And I got runners at the, the corners with one away instead of a runner on third with two away. It's a huge difference, actually, because it allows Brooks Orton to get a sack fly to bring in yet another Rattler run. Funk over at third, Jones at first. And there is a conference on the mound. While we have this short break in the action, tonight is Final Four Saturday. Huh. Yes, it UConn is. taking on the number one seed Florida Gators, and the number eight Kentucky Wildcats will be taking on the number two Wisconsin Badgers. Now, with my bracket, this is not the Final Four I had in mind, so... Who do you have winning the whole thing? Uh, well, I had two final, f two out of the four final four teams. I had Florida and Wisconsin, but uh, in the games here tonight for UConn versus Florida, I'll go on ahead and I'll take Florida once again. I, I really like what they do on the defensive end. I mean, that's a plain and simple example. Uh, Dayton, they were averaging around 80 points per game when they were making their miraculous run. They go up against the Florida Gators and they only score 53. That just tells you what Florida can do to people. 
And then on the other side, I had Wisconsin in the Final Four, but you know what? I'm going to go on ahead and take Kentucky, the Wildcats. I, I just think that they're catching fire, and they've had themselves an incredible run. Coach Calipari, he's one of those transcendent coaches who he's been here before and he knows how to get his teams up and ready for this one. So I'll take Florida and Kentucky to go through. Brian, who do you have going through on your end? Well, I agree with you with Kentucky. Kentucky hitting their stride at the right time here in the national tournament. So I have Kentucky going to the championship game and I am picking both upsets, UConn and Kentucky, to be in the championship game. And between the two teams, I'd have to say UConn will be able to pull it off and in probably one of the more miraculous runs to a national title. Yeah, and if you think about that, that'd be one of the more improbable matchups a seven and an eight seed going at it for the national championship it just tells you how many great college teams there are out there right now and how closely matched up all these teams really are but i'm gonna go on ahead and i'll make my national championship pick florida Alrighty. They've played together a whole lot more. They've got some seniors on that team, and I think that chemistry is something that truly matters when it comes to college basketball, especially when it comes to the turnover category. And if you don't turn over the ball or get turnovers in these games, then you know, you're going to be able to control the game. I think Florida is going to be able to control the tempo better than any other team that is left in this tournament and that's why they're going to win the national championship alrighty now after a quick pitching change we have Arellano now pitching for the Falcons and his first pitch has a lot of heat on that one as Brooks Orton swings through for strike one. Hector Ar Arlano, a 5.92 ERA on the year with a 2-2 two and two win loss. This is his ninth game to appear in so far on the year. He started five games as that pitch is out of the zone and evens things up at 1-1. One and one. He's pitched 24 innings, and in those 24 and a third innings, he's had 15 strikeouts as compared to five based on balls. And Brooks Orton will look to greet Arahano to the game. Runners on the corners, one away. That pitch above the belt, two and one now. Check over to first. And they're safely standing up is Jones. And the 2 1 pitch in there for strike two. The 2-2 pitch swung on and missed. He struck him out. Brooks Orton strikes out swinging for the second out of the inning as Drake Roberts now steps up to the plate. Roberts, he's 3-for-3 three three today with an RBI. So he's had himself a whale of a game already. Runners at the corners, two outs. A pop fly won't do the Rattlers any good now in this situation. First pitch to Roberts. Out of the zone, 1-0. and oh. 2-0 and oh now the count to Drake. And 
that one popped up to foul territory over and right. Unable to make the play is Madsen. As he tried to make the over the shoulder grab. And he took an awkward route to get there. He was trying to go back and look over his shoulder and make it like Bob Hayes style. A former wide receiver for the Cowboys, but wasn't able to find it. I think it might have had in part to do with the clouds. I mean, you look at those clouds up there right now, that, trying to find a baseball high up in the air against them. It's just uh, very difficult to do. Runner goes, and they're going to throw down to third instead, but back safely is Funk. And Jones able to get to second safely. Three and one the count to Roberts. Now a single you'd have to think would potentially score two Rattlers unless the St. Mary's wouldn't want to risk trying to score Jones with Maldonado waiting on deck. And that one swung on and hit to the gap over at left, but there to make the play is Andrade. And the Falcons able to evade any more trouble. They trail 7-1 to one now as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Falcons do up right after this short break. You're watching Rattler Baseball here on the Rattler Network. Welcome back. Top of the sixth inning. Just getting underway as the first pitch from Matt McClain is called for ball one. Brian Maglion joined by Joe Rodriguez bringing you game number three of a three-game set between the Rattlers and the Falcons. Yeah, the Rattlers trying to complete the sweep here today. They got their brooms out and look like they just might be able to do it. And that pitch tails inside. Two and one now the count to Madsen. The five, six, seven hitters do up this half inning for the Falcons. Yeah, Madsen, he's had a struggle here today. He's 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts. So McLean's had his number for sure. Breaking ball out of the zone, three and one to Madsen. And this, a sharp contrast to the way things began in the series. As that pitch, a bit of confusion there. Oh, and the umpire. Yeah, it was ball four. <laughs> a little late on the call, nonetheless, assessing the walk to Madsen. 
our own David Tovar did have the score right on the board. We were all surprised, <laughs> wondering what was going on. I, like, I tip my hat to you, sir. Yeah. Change the rules. You have to get five balls now. Five <laughs> balls now. Uh, I see how it is. So Madsen <laughs> with a lead off walk, and that'll bring up the catcher Ryan Eric, who is one for two this afternoon. Curveball in there for strike one. I think McLean was more than eager to go on ahead and make another pitch right there. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh and one on the count here. Clay deals and that one fouled off and it's now oh and two. Rattler fans, be sure to follow your Rattlers on social media. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash St. Mary's Rattlers and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at St. Mary's Rattlers. Stay up to date with all the latest Rattler news and look out for all the social media contests that we have as that ball is lofted to center. There to make the play is Garcia for the first out of the inning. So it'll be one away, runner on first, and it'll be Braidman at the plate. Ryan Braidman, 0 for 1 here today. David Tovar breaking the scoreboard again. This is becoming a epidemic. As that ball hit over to third, the 5-4-3 double play is converted by the Rattlers. Oh, so a roundabout done. way to a 1-2-3 <laughs> inning for St. Mary's and that'll do it for the top of the six. We're heading to the bottom. Rattlers lead it 7-1 here on the Rattler Network. Yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the sixth inning underway here as Mario Maldonado leading things off. Fouls that one away. Owen won the count. Mario one for three here today with an RBI. Rattlers leading seven to one here in the bottom of the sixth. And that pitch runs inside for ball one. Rattler baseball looking to lead off a, a day of Rattler sports here for us today. Uh, got the baseball game, then we've got the Rattler Nation social going on, coinciding with the baseball game, and then of course a little bit of footy going on later here, lit on later tonight. And that'll be you and uh, our own David Tovar on the call, will it not be? Yes, it will, and you will be doing the PA for that 
ball game. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I'm I'm excited for some soccer. Although, it looks like the weather may not be the best, but I'm sure if they play like this with the lo the weather in London, then we'll be just fine <laughs> playing with it, like it is here in San Antonio. I'm really excited to see what this new look Rattler soccer team looks like. A little appetizer, if you will, for next Ooh. season as that one shot right at the dugout of Get out the, the Falcons. Get out the way. Saw a parting of burnt orange down there <laughs> on the third base side. Looks like everyone's just fine, but it's a hot shot that you don't want to be in front of. Mario with a fireball down there to the third base side. Here's a pitch to Mario and that one out of the zone. The count is two and two. And, and call strike three. Mario got caught looking. Great curveball there by Arellano as Omar Garcia will head to the plate. Omar is one for one here today. One out of the count. And that one out of the zone, so now it'll be 2-0. Two and, oh. yeah, and called strike one there. Omar looked like he was taking the whole way right there. Hermson's waiting on deck with one away. He'll see action for sure. Waiting in the hole is Gonzalez. And that one lifted to left. Under it is Andrade. And that is good for the second out of this inning. And Omar just got underneath that one. If he had hit it a bit more solidly, we may have seen that one travel for a while. He got a good pitch to handle right there. At the plate now, Joe Hermsen. Hermsen two for three this afternoon and that first pitch just inside for ball one Hermson also an RBI that was in the first inning as the Rattlers in that bottom of the first inning they managed to score two runs after the Falcons jumped out to that 1-0 lead and since then, St. Mary's, they haven't looked back. They had that four-run rally in the fourth and tacked on another one in the fifth. Hermson hits this one high and deep to left field at the warning track to make the catch is Andrade, and that'll do it for the inning. A one-two-three inning. St. Mary's unable to get anything going in the bottom of the sixth inning. We head to the top of the seventh. Rattlers lead seven to one.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the seventh inning. Just underway as that first pitch is hit over to right. Giving chase is Orton. And that will be good for a loud strike one. Matt McLean still on the mound for the Rattlers. Has allowed five hits and only one earned run. And has struck out six. At the plate is Daniel Andrade, who is two for two this afternoon. And that, f that pitch in there for strike two. McLean deals. Ooh, that one just a bit inside, and that's ball one. Andrade fouls that one back. The count will remain at one and two. Seven to one the score here, so no mercy rule to be in effect quite yet although we are in the seventh inning so if the Rattlers were able to get up by the appropriate amount of runs then the ball game would be over but first things first they gotta get the Falcons out 2-2 two -two the count that one a slow roller over to third there to make the play is Roberts and it is dug out by Hermsen beautifully done and that's good for out number one. And we saw Roberts right there. He took his time with the throw because he knew he had a good enough arm to go on ahead and get it on over there in time. Good velocity on the throw. Herms able to dig it out. So, one away. And... The first pitch to Kowal is out of the zone, 1-0. and Second pitch lifted over to left center. There to make the play is Jones for the second out of the inning. Right fielder, Ryan Hen. So quick eight, quick eight. A.B. right there, and now it'll be up to Ryan Head, the leadoff man. Head, he's 0 for 3 here today. He's struck out once as well. I was on a fastball on the outside corner. And there's that same fastball for called strike one. <coughs> two away, the 0 1 pitch, and now we'll be 0 and 2. <laughs> Here's McLean. Ooh, just missed right there at that slider. One and two. A couple of arms are warming up in the bullpen for the Rattlers. But with McLean in such control, it seems doubtful that he'd come out of the game. They might just want to limit his pitch count as we are about two thirds of the way through the year. That one tapped back to him. McLean able to get the glove on it. Throw to first is in time, and that'll do it. We're heading to the middle of the seventh inning. It's time to stretch here at Dixon Stadium. The Rattlers lead it 7-1. to one.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the seventh inning right here at Dixon Stadium. Leading off for the Rattlers is Al Gonzalez. Yeah, we're going to get to see Al, Keith, and Adrian this inning for sure. And Gonzalez takes that pitch for strike one, one and one the count. And over the past 19 innings that the Rattler pitching staff has pitched, only one run has been allowed <laughs> as Gonzalez strikes out for out number one here in the bottom of the seventh. That's an impressive statistic to say the least. Even for the number 13 team in the nation, that's something that you don't see done. It's very, very impressive. Now here comes Keith Funk to the plate. Funk, he's two for three today. Both of his hits have been uh, deposited into right field, little loopers, but hey, single's a single. The run rule for those of you wondering is 10 runs after seven. So St. Mary's would have to tack on an additional four runs in order to run rule the Falcons. That one pitched well inside. Funk, he backs off the plate, and it's now 2-1. and one. On deck is Adrian Garcia. Funk awaits the 2-1, and he loops that one high into shallow center. There to make the play is Kowal, and that's good for out number two. Moving from third to first base, Trey Cochran. Moving from first base to left field, number 26, Neil Maxson. Now playing shortstop, number 11, David Fetkiner. And now playing third base, number 10, Ty Morgan. And several change have been made defensively for the Falcons. Yep, Cochran, he's now playing first base. Morgan's now playing third. Fetkenner, Fetkenner has come in. He's now playing short. And Matson is now playing left. And quickly the count goes to 0 and 2 to Adrian. And credit Hector Arellano. Hasn't allowed a single hit and has struck out three Rattler batters over the course of the last two innings, I believe. Yeah, he's been very effective since he's come into the game. Off-speed pitch lifted to center. Right to Kowal, who makes the play. And that will retire the side. Three up, three down go the Rattlers. As we head to the top of the eighth inning, Rattlers still in control. They lead 7-1 to one as you're watching Rattler Baseball here on the Rattler Network. So much to celebrate in Division II. We're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have a 10 initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly dollars have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the eighth inning here at Dixon Stadium. Brian Magaliwan, Joe Rodriguez with you. 
bringing you the conclusion of a three-game set between the St. Mary's Rattlers and the UTPB Falcons. The two, three, and four hitters do up this half of the inning for the Falcons as that one is hit over to right center. There to make the play is Brooks Orden for the first out of the inning. Quick overview of the ball game. In the top of the first inning, the Falcons were able to score a run off a homer from Andrew Griffall, who is at the plate right now. Rattler is able to bounce back with two runs of their own in the bottom half of the first. And then in the bottom of the fourth, Rattlers blew the game wide open with four consecutive runs to start off the inning. They tacked on another run in the bottom of the fifth. And that brings us to the top of the eighth. Rattlers leading 7-1 to one as that one... A chopper over to first, unable to get a hold of it, oh. is Hermsen, and it is bobbled over in right field by Orden, and digging in, it looked to, for third, <laughs> was Griffall, but then he was told to hold up, and he stays over at second. So it'll be a single with an air on the bobble. Herms and it looked like he was playing the line right there, trying to not let anything get by the line. But then Griffall hit one to what would have been Hermsen's right, our left, and Joe had to range on over. Looks like a pitching change up coming for the Rattlers. I think that's Rick Villa who's been warming in the bullpen. They do have two arms that they could potentially go to out there right now. Coach Meagle. He'll make the signal, and that'll do it for McLean. So McLean had himself a great game, allowed one run on six hits. But pitching change for the Rattlers as McLean's day is done. We'll tell you about the new pitcher when we come back. Rattlers still lead 7-1. to one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the middle of the top of the eighth inning. A pitching change was made. Now pitching for the Rattlers, the double deuce, <laughs> Rick Villa. Yeah, Rick. Good right-handed relief pitcher. He's been consistent for the Rattlers throughout his entire career. 
Rick Villa with a 2-0 win-loss record and a 4.74 ERA pitching in relief for Matt McClain who pitched a solid six excuse me seven and one-thirds innings allowing only one earned run to go along with six strikeouts yeah I'm sure that Matt feels like he had some more left in the tank and he could keep on going but like we mentioned earlier, it's now two-thirds of the way into the year, so they're going to go on ahead and leave it to the double deuce to come on in and finish out the game. <laughs> Rick working from the set. Here's the pitch. And, he and that one bounces in the dirt. Great job by Funk, able to keep it in front of him, and that'll even up the count at two balls and two strikes. And you notice Funk also, he kept pretty good posture right there when he was blocking that ball that was in the dirt. And it allowed the ball to, when he blocked it, to just go right back in front of him instead of off to the side. That one hit to a ranging Gonzalez. So whirling throw. Hermsen manages to go up and get it and come back down on the bag for a great out right there. The second time today where Gonzalez has had a spinning throw for an out two away. And Joe showing the hops right there. Air Hermsen in full flight, able to snag that throw from Gonzalez for the second out of the inning. Now it'll be up to Neil Madsen with two away here. The runner did move over to third. That is Griffall over there on the bag. Griffall is still the responsibility of Matt McClain. Via, he comes set. Here's the pitch. And that one hit into left center field, and that'll get down. Griffall will come in to score. And a great RBI right there by Madsen, who for some reason finds himself down on the ground over there near first base. Did he step on the bag wrong? He looks a bit shaken up. And time is Thank called. I didn't see what happened. I was too busy watching the ball. When I looked over, Madsen just was on top of the bag. And I just missed it on the replay, too, on our broadcast. But he's still in the game, and the score is now 7-2, to two, still in favor of the Rattlers, as this one's hit high into the air towards the sky and the catch is made by Garcia and that'll do it for the inning. So one run on two hits, one left on base. Seven to two, still the advantage for St. Mary's. So we head toward the bottom of the eighth inning here on the Rattler Network. With 12 premier institutions across four states, the members of the Heartland Conference are proud partners of their communities and NCAA Division II. We are committed to the academic and athletic success of our student-athletes. The Heartland Conference offers a vibrant championship experience with schools that are nationally competitive, engaged with their communities, and supported by hundreds of thousands of fans who promote a positive game environment. To learn more about the Heartland Conference, visit us at heartlandsports.org. Choose Division II. Choose the Heartland Conference.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the eighth inning about to get started. The 9-1 and 2 hitters due up for the Rattlers. Leading off is Scott Jones, who is 0 for 2. One and oh the count to Jones. Second pitch in there for a called strike one and one. A um, little conference with the home plate umpire right there. Nothing malicious though. I think he just asked him, Are you sure that's a strike? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. And same pitch, same result. One and two now. An arm is warming in the pin for the Falcons. That one grounded over to third. And that throw sails way over the head of Cochran at first. As Jones will reach second base. Sliding in safely. And that was a bad play there by Morgan who overthrew Cochran at first. And that will be bring the leadoff batter to scoring position for the Rattlers. Yeah, I think Morgan knew that he had to rush that throw because Jones has great speed over there and that if he didn't rush the throw then you know he wouldn't have been able to get him on out. It's one of those things where you know the speed of Jones influences the play just by him being quick. Interesting here, the Rattlers showing bunt. I mean, they're up 7-2, a five-run lead. I mean, but still trying to squeeze that one run across. As Brooks Orton is at the plate. It might be because the Rattlers, they, they might, they've been struggling to execute their bunts every now and again here in this series, so might just be trying to get some extra work on it. But the and any insurance run is always valuable. So this one's hit sky high into the air it'll be caught by the right fielder head tagging up and heading to third is Jones so Jones one way or, or another finds his way to third base and it'll now be up to a Drake Roberts now looking ahead at the Rattlers schedule their next game will be at St. Edwards in Austin it will be a double header on Friday, April 11th at 1.30 p.m. It will be the start of a three-game set with the Hilltoppers. Oyster Bake weekend here at St. Mary's University, but the baseball team will be over in Austin playing. And then the next time these same Rattlers will be at home, will be a Tuesday night game against Tarleton State. First pitch scheduled for 6 p.m. on April 15th. Oof. As Drake Roberts swings and misses on that one, 2-1. That was his home run swing right there, and he went right through it. Good velocity once again by Arlen o. Off speed pitch. Swung on and hit down the line and left, and that will score another run. Jones in there, and sliding in safely for the double is Roberts, who is a bit shaken up over at second. And you saw him digging the entire way. I think he's fine. He's just readjusting his gloves, taking a little break right there. But yeah, he is up a little bit gingerly. But you saw him digging hard the entire way. As soon as he was out of the box, he was having the intent to end up at second base and does so. 8-2 to two now for the Rattlers and Maldonado with a chance to add to it with a speedy Roberts over at second. Here's the delivery and that one barely missing Maldonado. 1-0 the count. Rattler fans, we'd like to remind you once again that next Tuesday will be Neon Night, hosted by the number five nationally ranked Rattler softball team. 
that one hit high in the air, a can of corn. And Fettnecker able to settle underneath it and make the play. Two away now. Fans who attend Neon Night will that are wearing neon will be entered to win free oyster bake tickets and food coupons which will be given away throughout each game of their doubleheader which starts at 4 p.m. against Angelo State at the softball stadium in the park at St. Mary's. For more information, visit rattlerathletics.com. Two away now, Omar Garcia at the plate. Drake Roberts is at second. I don't know about you, but uh, the shirt from Rattler Madness, that one's very neon. I think I'm just going to go on ahead and wear that one and show on up at the ballpark. Who knows? Maybe have a chance to get <laughs> some food coupons or something. <laughs> 2 and 0 the count now for Garcia. Still leading from second is Roberts. Hector comes set and he'll go on ahead, step off, step back on. Hermson waits on deck. For the Rattlers, this would be their last at bat if they're able to record those last three outs next half inning. Pitch well outside, and that'll be 3 0 for Omar. Omar, he's one for two today. He's walked twice as well. And that one catches the inside corner for a called strike one. Three and one, the count now to Omar. Rattlers looking to complete a three-game sweep of these Falcons from UTPB has a great sliding grab by Madsen over at left. Ends the bottom of the eighth inning. Rattlers able to tack on one more run as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Falcons. Stay tuned. Rattlers trying to close things out right here on the Rattler Network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the ninth inning just underway. Leading off the inning for UTPB is David Fetnicker. There's Rick Villa looking to get these last three outs right here. That one popped up to shallow center. There to make the play is Garcia. And that's one away. Rattlers two outs now from completing the series sweep of the Falcons. Yep, and looking to start off the day for Rattler Athletics very nicely. Tennis also in action, I do believe. And then, of course, we've been teasing the soccer exhibition, the friendly, coming up later here today. As that pitch above the belt will want to know. 
If for whatever reason you're not able to tune in to watch the game, make sure to follow the game on social media. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash St. Mary's Rattlers. And then also you can follow the game on Twitter and Instagram at St. Mary's Rattlers for both of those handles. Or if you just want to check out the VOD video on demand of the game, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash St. Mary's Rattlers. One and two now, the count to Ty Morgan. Rick Villa has done a terrific job in relief, allowing only one hit. That one lifted once again to center, and Garcia not even moving probably two feet away from his spot, able to retire the second batter of the ninth inning, and now... It is up to Colin Kowal to prolong this ball game for the Falcons. St. Mary's the number 13 ranked team in the nation. And that one swung on and lined right to Roberts over at third. And that will do it. Rattlers complete the three-game sweep of the University of Texas Permian Basin Falcons. They win this one 8-2. to two. The winner of the ball game, the winning pitcher, is Matt McClain, who pitched an impressive seven and one-thirds innings, allowing only two earned runs. St. Mary's improving their record to 26 and 11, 13 and 5 in the Heartland Conference. UTPB falls two games under 500 now, 17 and 19 overall, 8 and 10 in Heartland Conference play. Joe, what are your thoughts? on this impressive performance from these Rattlers. Well, the series sweep was really what St. Mary's was looking for, and they knew they'd be challenged in Heartland Conference play right here. University of Texas Permian Basin, they came in hot. They were on a four-game winning streak before this series started. And St. Mary's, they were up to the challenge. Once they they got down early at 7-1, to the comeback in the first game, but then after that, St. Mary's was able to click on all cylinders and very, very impressive outing for all St. Mary's. Everyone contributed in this series and it's something that you like to see the team starting to click as we're just now about two thirds of the way through the year. And with that, we would like to thank all of you for tuning in and watching this production of the Rattler Network. We remind you that at 7 o'clock tonight, we will be broadcasting live the soccer friendly between our new look, St. Mary's Rattlers and the and Our Lady of the Lake for Joe Rodriguez, David Tovar, and the rest of the Rattler Network crew. I'm Brian Magliuan. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.